On our channel, we have shown that fossilization, or shall I say, rock can form quickly. But the unfortunate thing is, is that it's being criticized as being, well, everybody knows this. No, they don't. And that's not really rock. Yes, it is. But the conclusion that we're coming to, they're saying you're forcing this idea of short periods of time to prove that there was a worldwide flood. Yes, we are. But so does everybody else. The idea or the notion that this earth has been, uh, that life on earth is mil hundreds of millions of years old and that it's evolved over time. Don't think for a second that there's no agenda there, that it's pure, unadulterated science. Although it comes across like that, behind the scenes, it's not like that. There's politics involved. There's pressure involved. There's, um, you know, you got to toe the line or else you step outside the uh, in, in color outside the, the lines too far and you've gone too far. It's like that in real life. I would like to think that science is altruistic, and I believe to a degree that it is. But it starts with a worldview. And currently, the worldview of science is that the Earth is 4.51 billion years old, that everything is done naturalistically, that is, that there is no room for anything supernatural, and that rocks are old, fossils take a long time to form, everything is uniformitarianly in position because of Low, slow processes over time with only since the 1980s has they uh, um, adapted punctuated catastrophes catastrophism but to say that there was one worldwide catastrophism 400 4500 or 4400 years ago is anathema meaning that you just don't say that so the question is how long does it take to take this right here and turn it into this right here. Let me show you a couple more fossils and then I will get to my point. My point is pretty cool and I want to thank everyone for coming on here this morning. Let me show you another, another fossil bed of fish. This is fossil fish right here. Is that mass catastrophism? It sure is. You know, whenever I talk about the megalodon, Possibly, you know, the teeth fossilized, not, no other part of the megalodon fossilized, as they say. And I said that it happened during the worldwide flood. The immediate question is, well, how can a fish be fossilized? How can a fish drown? Well, when you have a tsunami, a series of tsunamis, earthquakes, and volcanism going on while tidal waves of sediment and water that far surpassing any mountain at the time, and by the way, the mountains were no more, they suggest, creation evolution, excuse me, creationist geologists suggest that the highest mountain at the time before the flood was about seven to 8,000 feet tall, okay? They calculate that based on the amount of water that we have. Everest and, and, and the Rocky Mountains are all recent upheavals. So when it was covered, it was covering at around 7,000, 8,000 feet, just above it. And you're going to see mass catastrophism, even in the water. These fish had to be buried not only quickly, but they had to be buried profoundly, meaning that they had to have lots of sediment on top of them. The sediment that's involved in creating a fossil is not just a little layer of dusting over time and then, no, it's got to be a lot. It's got to be a lot of pressure. It squeezes out the water that's in the matrix, in the animal itself, and then through heat and mineralization, it becomes that. So I contend from a creationist standpoint that it doesn't take long to create a fossil and that these fossils are not very old. Let me show you another fossil. Here's a little sea creature right there. See his pointy little beak right there? There you go. Kind of cool. Here's another sea creature. This is a Nautilus. They look very similar today. There's been no change. But yet they say that this is millions and millions of years old. Here. From a creationist standpoint, 4,400 years separate these two. From an evolutionary standpoint, millions of years separate these two. And yet this remains unchanged. Why? 
because evolution isn't true from a creationist standpoint. And from an evolutionary standpoint, they say that, well, this Nautilus found perfection very early on, and there was no need for it to change any further. How convenient. I have a box of fossils here that I'm going to open up live. I have not opened this up yet. And then I'm going to tell you about an experiment we're going to be doing. And I want you to be the first to hear about it here on Instagram Live. If you're looking for fossils, head over to Etsy and you'll be able to find some cool things. All right. Now, let me set this up. What I'm about to show you is a fossil that resembles this and this. And then we're going to do an experiment. So don't go anywhere. It'll be worth your time. Ah, here's one. Good. I got three leaves. I didn't think I was going to get three. Well, this is kind of cool. Did I order three? Maybe I ordered three. That is a fossil leaf. And you're going to see it a lot better when I actually shoot it for the video. Okay, let me show you another one. Okay, this is an unknown species. Really? Is it really that unknown? I'm not saying that it's this, but... It looks very similar. I'm not saying this is this, but it looks similar enough. All right, I'm going to show you. Let me just close up. See all the nice detail in that? How old do you think this is? How long did it take to form this? Those are two really good questions because at the heart of evolution, it's long periods of time and it takes a long time for it to form. Now, this is the maple leaf um, fossil. I'm looking forward to seeing what this looks like. Oh, look at that. It's a maple leaf. Maple leaf-like or maple leaf. How big is it? Well, it's about this big. So you're looking at around, oh, about five inches across. One more look-see. Okay, so here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking two leaves, this one and this one. I'm, I'm going to go get two more. I'm not going to get these exact ones, but very close to it. And I'm sending them off to someone in Indiana who is going to take this and put it into a limestone-like matrix. He is then going to add mineralized water, pressure, and heat. And I'm going to get him to take some photos of the process, maybe even a video clip. And we're going to be making a video on how long does it take to form a fossil. And these are going to be put into this matrix and this oven and pressurized oven. And it's going to pressurize it. And it's, it's equating the earth during the time of the flood when the fossils were formed quickly. We're talking about massive amounts of sediment, so heavy that it squishes trees. We see trees that are, that are somewhat flattened or oval-like because of it. Hundreds and millions of tons of sediment. And when that sediment was done, it squeezed all the water out, and then it heated it. The mineralization got in there. And then we wind up with, uh, with, with this, an impression or permineralization which I'll show you an example of that another time. He's going to be doing that in the course of two weeks. We are going to attempt to create leaf fossil, possibly a bee, in two weeks' time, possibly three weeks. That's it. Then we're going to bring that specimen back to New York, and I'm going to break it open, and I'm going to show you the fossil inside. I may be doing it live here on Instagram. So you're going to want to definitely follow us so that you can get um, alerted when we do this. I'm going to give you a phone number. I don't know if I'm going to be able to appear it on the screen or not, 
But if you want to get on our text group, I, I just let the text group know that I was going live. You'll definitely want, and I will alert you when we either release the video and or go live. And that number is 315, you ready? 509-9075. Again, that's 315-509-9075. It's free, and it's only good in the United States and Canada. Now, I want to give you a free report before we leave here today. And the report is called, and by the way, if there is no Noah's Ark, there was no flood. And if there was no flood, there was no Noah's Ark. So they go hand in hand. This report, sorry about the reverse vision, is three top reasons Noah's Ark must still exist. This is a free report I'm going to give to you. It's two pages. You can't get it anywhere on the internet. And this is how you get it. Go to museumalerts.com. That's right, museumalerts.com. Take a screenshot of it. You can go to it later, and you can get this report for free. I'm John Adolfi. Thank you very much for watching this this morning on uh, Instagram, and we will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.